Well, good morning. Good morning. It is literally, as my middle schooler likes to say, everything is, it is literally New Year's Day. 2022 was a mixed bag, was it not? 2023 is probably going to also be a mixed bag. The pandemic goes on, economic struggle goes on, the political BS goes on. This church is going to be in transition forever. Just kidding. Well, I mean, sort of. <sighs> Every ad on my socials for the last week has been for a diet, or for exercise, or for a cleanse, or for a master class. Do you guys have those popping up? And those are all great things, I suppose. But nothing is going to magically fix the coming year. Do I need to say it again? Nothing is going to magically fix the coming year. Nothing is going to make me say, this is my year, yes! And honestly, if any one of you claims 2023 as your year, you are asking for it. <laughs> Look what happened last year. <laughs> Every year, it seems like I'm shamed into making a resolution, right? To somehow change myself. And I know a few people who are good at this, I will admit, it's true, but I almost always fail miserably about three weeks in. Anyone else with me on the resolutions and the failings? Yeah. So this year I thought, let's do something different. Let's try a prayer habit. And I know that sounds like, wow, you're the pastor, you're supposed to say that. We're supposed to pray, right? But no, really. No, really. Let's ask God to help us live truly live as sincerely as we are truly loved. Let us live, truly live, as sincerely as we are truly loved by God. I think we should carelessly throw ourselves out there into this messy world in faith. Like Martin Luther's famous saying, it's one of my favorites, sin boldly, but repent more boldly still. Yes! The idea of sinning boldly, does that make you nervous? It makes me think of the line from the traditional confession found on page 56 in the Green Book, if you're with me, for the things we have done and for the things we have left undone, right? Sinning boldly is really the only way to do it, I'm pretty sure. I mean, why would you sin kinda? Right? Does anyone sin halfway? I think to sin properly, as Martin advises us, would be to emulate the clumsiness of middle school declarations of love. Yeah? Or the weepy, beloved mess of parenthood. Or it makes me think of the work we're doing together, both as individuals and as a congregation and as a community, to unlearn our prejudices and all of the missteps and blunders of that work as a person of privilege that I make, right? Imagine, though, what if we don't put ourselves out there risking sin and pain and sticking our foot in our mouths? What if we stayed safe and pure and boring? What would we lose by playing it safe? Today is the first Sunday of Christmas, the eighth day of 12. We are still celebrating the joy of Christ coming into this world fully human, born of Mary, the betrothed of Joseph, into poverty. Jesus had to learn how to walk, probably had a crush on somebody at some point, right? Can you be fully human and not have a crush on somebody at some point? Jesus might have had a temper tantrum as a child. Can you imagine it? Why not, right? We all did. And as, adult, as an adult, he took so many risks to show love, to teach justice, and to show mercy, to truly be with us. 
to be with the humans. And you know what? In the end, it did cost him not playing it safe, didn't it? I want you to look at the first reading again that Julie read for us from Philippians. It's called the Christ Hymn. And I think it was probably set to music at some point. I think it's been set to music many times. Um, but it's what it's known as. I feel that as Christian people, we tend to f focus on one half of the Christ hymn or the other. <laughs> we're either in the humbled and died part or we're in the glory to Jesus part. It's one or the other. We don't often figure out how to do both well. The first half of the story is the incarnation, the story of God becoming human in Jesus and the outcomes of that choice. Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but instead emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, found himself in human form and humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The second half of this hymn, to me, answers the natural question we have of, why would God do that? Why would God do that? And it speaks to the Creator's desire to elevate Christ's servanthood. Not Christ's awesomeness, not the almighty power and lightning bolts and all that jazz. But it's the servanthood of Jesus. The wonderfully backwards way that Jesus shows us why he is worthy of God's glory. Loving others, loving humans so much that it gets you killed. The thing is this. Jesus wasn't limited to one half of this hymn or the other. He managed to contain the whole thing. Servanthood and glory. Humanity and divinity. His very existence was a great both and. Right? Not an either or. He contained contradiction just like we do. We contain flesh and soul, yes. We contain joy and grief. How were your holidays? Well, there was joy and there was grief, right? We have a beginning at birth and we have an end at death. And as wonderful and terrifying as that is, it's who we are. I wonder if sometimes we Lutherans tend to get stuck just in the first half of the song. Become a person, do well, humble yourself, serve others, and die. Good enough. But in our baptismal identity, oh, in our baptismal identity, in our naming, we are, we are adopted. I feel like I keep cutting in and out. Sorry. We are adopted into Christ's lineage, and we become part of the second half of this song. We join Christ through his unflinching love for us, even with all of our fumbling, even with all of our messes, and we find that we can rest in Christ's reign. We can rest in that glory with Jesus through the example we set by risking boldly. Mm. Today we celebrate the naming of the baby Jesus, his name became the one that we lift above all others. Yeah. Today, I invite you, too, to remember your own name, who you are, and how loved you are by God, even in strange and difficult days, even through years that seem like decades some days. I don't know why we're surprised when life is difficult. Do you ever find yourself just sort of being like, I didn't expect that. <laughs> if life was hard for Jesus, why shouldn't it be hard for us too? But the win is here. Love is amazing, right? Loving others is always worthwhile. Laughter is a balm for our souls. Tears help us move through pain. Caring about things always brings grief. It just does. And making ourselves open by expressing our care for someone 
can make a really big mess in our lives. But again, what would life be like if you didn't? Just like there are two parts to this Christ hymn, there are two parts to Martin Luther's little saying to get us through this murky middle. It says, sin boldly, right? The fun part. But then it says, repent more boldly still. And my read on that is that we should take all the risks to love. And when we mess it up, that's fine. Don't forget to turn around. Don't forget to reorient yourself back to that name above all names, back to the name of love, to Jesus Christ. That's all. Amen. Amen.